What's up, guys? I'm recording this in class on Tuesday. This is the only time I'm going to see my B-Day guys in person. And I wanted to read another poem, as I've been doing every time. Read a poem or two. This one is uh, another classic that you may have seen in English class or you may see in future English classes. It's called My Papa's Waltz by a guy named Theodore Retke. I believe... This is uh, one of the most popular poems in literature classes and anthologies and so on. And it's really short, and I probably have it memorized, but I'm looking at the thing anyway. The whiskey on your breath could make a small boy dizzy, but I hung on like death. Such waltzing was not easy. We romped until the pans slid from the kitchen shelf. My mother's countenance could not unfrown itself. The hand that held my wrist was battered on one knuckle. At every step you missed, my right ear scraped a buckle. You beat time on my head with a palm caked hard by dirt, then waltzed me off to bed, still clinging to your shirt. That poem was published in the 1940s, and when it came out at first, people thought, oh, that's a nice memory of, oh, dad came home, and he kind of, you know, to do that thing where, like, the kid's feet are on top of the dad's shoes, and the dad takes a step and kind of, you know, brings the kid with him around, and that's how it was for a while. That poem was kind of known as, like, oh, it's a nice little mild memory, but in the 70s, in 80s, people started to say, wait a minute, what if it's a message about abuse? What if this father is mean and violent and drunk? And in the poem, you can see that he's drinking. You can see words like beat and battered and scraped. And they're not directly saying that he's going around punching everybody, but it's so close to being there. You know, it's so close to being on the surface that a lot of people started to wonder, especially in the 80s, people would go on Oprah and have some hypnotist uncover memories and say, ah, you were in fact a victim of crazy abuse when a lot of that turned out to be false. But anyway, it's a great poem because it shows that you don't have to say what it's about. Okay, when you write a poem, you don't have to say what it means and all of the emotions and stuff. You just have to say what happens. Okay, what's there? Describe the thing and what it looks like and what it sounds like and what it feels like. And then the reader will do the next step. The reader will think about what it means. Is it good or bad? Is it a loving memory? Is it about abuse? Well, you can go either way and neither one is crazy. Okay. Just like a painting, if you look at a painting, you might think, oh, this is representing, uh, you know, some religious metaphor or political stuff. But the painting itself is just like, you know, a flower or a guy on a horse or whatever. And if the painter does a good job of displaying that thing, then it will evoke all kinds of feelings in you. But they're not like labeling the feel. They're not like saying, you know, Hey, be sad here. Hey, this is nice. Okay. So in a poem, I'm not telling you when I'm doing lots of commenting and looking at people's stuff, I'm not telling you what you think should be about, what it means, what the feelings are. I'm just saying, hey, let's try to be clear about what's actually there. You know, what's on the canvas if this was a painting or what's on screen if this was a movie. That's just a thing I thought of when I was looking at some of your stuff. Today I'm going to post two assignments, but they're not new. One that I should have posted last time that I've already talked about a bunch, and one that's the next step that I've also talked about. So we'll get on that, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks.